Hello, this is Vipul Burohit and uh, you are watching my YouTube channel. Now, my dear friends, this video is all about organometallic compounds part 2. In part 1, I'll explain you what is the exact definition of organometallic compounds and then we went into its classification. If at all you have missed that part 1, no worries my dear friends. You will find the link of that part 1 video in the description box of this particular video. Okay, so please my request is go through that part 1 and then come back to part 2. So what are the contents as far as this part 2 is concerned? Part 2 my dear friends is all about discussion with respect to synthesis of organometallic compounds, preparation of organometallic compounds. Now, how we are going to proceed with respect to the preparation or synthesis? Two ways, my dear friends. First is, we are preparing altogether a new organometallic compound. So that means what? See, whenever, my dear friends, we talk about a reaction, we have reactants getting converted into products. So when I say that altogether a new organ or metallic compound is going to be formed, it means that in the reactant we don't have any organ or metallic compound. It is directly being produced where? In the products. So this is the one way of synthesis of organ or metallic compounds. The other way is we already have one organ or metallic compound and from which we are going to prepare another organ or metallic compound. Okay, so this is what the difference is as far well as the synthesis of organometallic compounds are. Alright, in total we are going to discuss five methods. Okay, and I will be giving you some uh, couple of simple examples also under every category so that you understand the concept very well. Alright, so here we start with the first synthetic method of organometallic compounds and that is called as direct reaction of metals the other word for this is oxidative addition reaction okay what it is oxidative addition reaction right so now you get some idea also over here that there are two types of reaction taking place one is oxidation the other is addition reaction Okay, so that's why we call it as oxidative addition reaction. Now, what exactly happens in this reaction and that is, we are going to consider a metal and that is going to combine with an alkyl halide under suitable conditions, thereby resulting in the formation of an organometallic compound. So the general reaction, how it can be written is, we have a metal reacting with an alkyl halide or it can be a aryl halide, R can be either an alkyl group or an aryl group. Now because we have a metal over here which is highly electropositive, so it will have a greater affinity towards what? The halogen, that is X. Okay? And as a result of which, we are going to get what? The organometallic compound. I have not written the exact formula of the organometallic compound because the nature of the formula, the nature of the organometallic compound form depends on the nature of the metal, which I am going to discuss now. Okay, so this is just a general reaction. Okay, a metal combining with an alkyl halide resulting in the formation of an organometallic compound under suitable reaction conditions. Alright, so here we go. The first priority which is being given is a highly electropositive metal. See my dear friends, it's not that the less electropositive metal will not react. I'll come to that point also, don't worry about that. But then the priority is given to a, a highly electropositive metal. Alright, so let us start with alkali metals. You know very well. Okay, the very first thing which should come into your mind whenever we say highly electropositive metal, yes, it has to be what? Alkali metal. So the reaction is we take two moles. Okay, this was just a general reaction. So I just draw a horizontal line to bifurcate the reaction. And that is, we, I take two moles of the alkali metal. I treat this with uh, alkyl halide. Alright. Now, how the reaction takes place is, I'll just explain you, very simple, and that is by means of bond formation and bond breaking. There is going to be a bond breaking taking place between R and X. Now, because I got two moles of M, that is the alkali metal, one M will go towards R, and the other M will go towards what? X. Alright? So as a result of which, now you understand what should be the product because why am I showing all this so that you get an idea about what product will be formed before I actually write it down. 
So this is the way you need to understand the reactions. All right, so it becomes much more interesting and when it becomes interesting, you easily understand that also. Okay, so we have here the product which will be formed is, yes, you guessed it right, it's going to be Rn and plus we have Mx. Now we are in to the preparation of uh, organometallic compound. And in my part one, I've already told you what exactly organometallic compound is all about. So when I talk about this, Rn, where R is going to be either alkyl or aryl. And when I talk about alkyl or aryl, it has to be organic carbon. All right, so an organic carbon is being attached to a metal and therefore it is an organometallic compound. So this is OMC, organometallic compound. So this is a reaction for what? I write it down over here in short, so you understand this? Yes, AAM. Okay, A means what? It's alkali metal. Alright, now I give you some specific reaction also so that you understand this way. So, the most common, the alkali metal, the very first element of that particular group we can talk about. And that is going to be what? Lithium. In fact, lithium also turns out to be the very first metal of the periodic table. Okay, because hydrogen, you know, okay, it has got dubious properties. Okay, and that's the reason it has given a different position. Helium is going to be a gas, it's going to be a non-metal, okay, it's basically inert, okay, that's what is the basic word which we can use for helium. So, we say that lithium is going to be the first metal of the periodic table. So, I take that example, so I'm going to take lithium and I'm going to treat this with CS3Cl. Okay, Li plus CS3Cl. So on these particular lines, you know, you can predict the product form and that is going to be, it will be LiCH3 and LiCl. Now also my dear friends, uh, we need to also look into the reaction, any reaction with respect to what stability purpose. Okay, now this LiCH3 that is also called as methyl lithium is much more stable in a tetrameric state. Okay, so that's the reason we write down the formula as Li4CH3,4. Okay, and also I told you that the reaction takes place under suitable conditions. So that suitable conditions can be either the reaction can take place in presence of benzene or it can be in presence of dry nitrogen. All right. So this is the way the reaction can take place. Uh, coming back to the the balancing part of this, so we have over here four. So this will become 8, okay, and this will become 4. So this is what we get. And this is the organometallic compound which I'm talking about. All right. Now, coming to the charges, my dear friends. The charges is that lithium, when you talk about, it's in an isolated state. And let me tell you, my dear friends, any element which is in the isolated state, any element, it can be a metal, it can be a non-metal, any element in the periodic table. If it is in the isolated state and then it doesn't have any charge. So that means it is zero. Now here you can see the same lithium is going to be in a combined state. And alkali metals in a combined state generally show a charge of plus one. Okay, generally it shows a charge of what? Plus one. So here we become plus one. So now we can check it out from 0 to plus 1. So there is an increase in charge. An increase in charge is called as what? Oxidation, my dear friends. Okay, and therefore we call this as uh, oxidative reaction. All right, addition taking place because uh, the alkyl group is getting added to the metal. Okay, so that's the reason we call it as an oxidative addition reaction. Now it is with that perspective that I'm using the word it is addition, my dear friends. Please be very clear. Because if you go into the technical definition of addition, it is a reaction where at least two reactants combine at least two. So that means it can be three and four also. So here it is like at least two reactants combined resulting in the formation of what? Only and only one product. Okay, that is what is an addition reaction. And the product form is called as adduct. Okay, but this is a technical definition over here. Here, what I mean is, we have that definition also when I come into the later part of this. But then, here when I talk about addition reaction, we are talking about the alkyl or the aryl group getting added to the metal, resulting in the formation of an organometallic compound. Alright, I hope the concept is getting clear to you all. Okay, no confusions as yet. Alright, now next thing is, here there is an increase in charge by 1, okay, it was 0 and this is what, plus 1. So therefore we call this as a 1 electron oxidative addition reaction. Okay, it is what, 1 electron oxidative reaction. 
But my dear friends, the reaction is not restricted only to one electron. I give you some other example. Let us take an example of alkaline earth metal. Okay, because that is the second thing which comes to our mind when you talk about a highly electropositive metal. Alright, so we have an alkaline earth metal which has a valency of 2. So when I make it react with an alkyl halide, so what exactly happens, I'll just tell you so that you understand this very well. And that is, obviously this bond breaks between the R and the X. Okay, and because M has a valency of 2, it will form a bond with R and also it will form a bond with what? X. Alright, the reaction will take place in presence of dry ether. Okay, and it results in the formation of a alkyl metal halide. I think you're getting it, what I'm trying to uh, pinch over here. Yes, it's the most famous compound, Grignard reagent. Alright, so here we go, and that is. In presence of dry ether, we say it is Rmx. Alright? So when I talk about the Grignard reaction, the very first thing which comes into your mind as far as the metal is concerned, oh yes, it's magnesium. Alright? So what we have is we are going to treat magnesium with say ethyl chloride, that is C2H5CL, in presence of dry ether. So as a result of which, what are we going to get is C2H5Mg. CL. Okay, C2H5 and GCL. So it's basically an insertion reaction also. Magnesium gets inserted in between the alkyl group or the aryl group and the halide group. Okay, but basically it's an addition reaction. Okay, now this fits into the so-called technical definition. Yes, where at least two reactants combine resulting in the formation of a single product. Okay, so this is an organometallic compound where the carbon of the alkyl is directly attached to a magnesium. And I write down over here, and that is the most famous compound in organic chemistry, and that is GR. It's Grignard reagent. Alright, so this is all the example which I've given you with respect to alkali metal and alkaline earth metal. But let me tell you my dear friends, I'll just give you a couple of more examples and that will suggest that it's not necessary always the alkali metal and the alkaline earth metal can form these compounds. Okay, some one or two examples I'll give you about the other category also. I'll give you an example of zinc. Okay, zinc is not an alkali or alkaline earth metal. It's basically a D block element. Alright, but then it also shows a reaction. I'll give you an example with respect to uh, a ryl group. So I take uh, for example of uh, bromobenzene. So when I talk about bromobenzene, and I treat this with zinc, C6H5Br. Okay, the reaction does take place in presence of dry ether. So same thing is zinc has a valency of 2. So it means that zinc is going to form a bond with carbon and the zinc is also going to form a bond with bromine. And as a result of which it is going to give you phenyl zinc bromide. Okay, C6H5ZnBr. So this is another organometallic compound. Alright, also one more example I would like to give you is sometimes it is also possible to form an organometallic compound of a less electropositive metal. Then in that case we are going to use not that less electropositive metal directly, okay, we are going to use it in the form of an alloy. Okay, I'll give you an example and that is, let us take an example of C2H5I, okay, an alkyl alloy. I treat this with sodium amalgam. Okay, this is an alloy. Okay, the reaction takes place in presence of an ester. Alright, and as a result of which, what am I going to get is C2H5 twice Hg and we will be getting what? NaI. Okay, that is sodium iodide. Okay, that is what we are going to get. So, this is 2C2H5I plus 2NAG and you get over here this. This is an organometallic compound where we are talking about mercury and mercury is not that highly electropositive as compared to that of, yes, the alkali and the alkaline earth metals. But then still there is a possibility but then the possibility is based on what? Alloy. This is also called as sodium amalgam. Whenever a metal combines with mercury, that combination is always called as what? An amalgam. Alright? So the naming depends upon which metal is going to combine with mercury. Here it is going to be sodium, so we call it as what? Sodium amalgam. Sometimes it is going to be zinc, so we call it as zinc amalgam. 
all right so this is my dear friends the first method which we also called as direct reaction of the metals or we also call it as oxidative addition methods where we are taking, taking examples of an alkali metal reacting with an alkyl halide we are taking an example of an alkaline earth metal reacting with an alkyl halide at the same time we can also take an example of uh, d block elements such as zinc and mercury we also take a mercury in the form of a less electropositive metal comparatively to alkali and alkaline earth metal then we take it in the form of a alloy. Alright? So I hope you have understood this first method of preparation very well.